These children are Shaolin secular disciples. Shaolin followers are divided into secular disciples and martial monks. To become a martial monk, the dream of all secular disciples demands the finest in both Kung Fu skills and Buddhist devotion and is a title that can only be conferred by their masters. Here, they created Tongji Gong, which incorporates the advantages of every style of Shaolin Kung Fu. Shaolin Kung Fu demands both spiritual and mental as well as physical training. Tongji Gong best shows this concept. Tongji Gong is divided into basic and advanced levels. Basic Tongji Gong focuses on mobility, especially various forms of rolling and leaping. It requires great flexibility of tendons and joints, which is why five to six-year-old boys are at the best age to practice this skill. These two nine-year-old boys, who have practiced basic Tongji Gong for four years, have made the most fragile parts of their bodies become deadly weapons. Those who have mastered basic Tongji Gong may move on to advanced Tongji Gong when they are older. This 18-year-old student has practiced advanced Tongji Gong for six years and demonstrates the extremes of flexibility capable by the human body. Learning advanced Tongji Gong is similar to learning Qi Kong. Actions are soft but powerful stretching human joints to the limits of endurance. A master of advanced Tongji Gong can bend his limbs to seemingly impossible angles. A normal person can bend his foot back no more than 90 degrees, keeping his knee straight. A Tongji Gong master can bend his foot back through 180 degrees. So how does this extraordinary flexibility help with Kung Fu? According to Master Shi Hen Jun, to become a Shaolin Kung Fu master, Tongji Gong is vital. It makes the joints extremely pliable, which in turn enables perfect posture and enormous power. What's more, it ensures that those qualities can last a lifetime. Kung 然后你到了一定的年龄，比方说到五十岁、六十岁，你本心的武功慢慢的就退化了，练通的功它退化不下去。Shaolin martial monks number only around thirty. The extreme hardship and difficulty involved in gaining the title removes all but the very elite. The hardships and harshness do not abate with time. Rather, they increase in magnitude as the monk progresses. Back from their crawl down the hill, the students practice basic kung fu drill for two hours a day. The basic skills include stretching and strength exercises designed to equip the body for the techniques that lie ahead. After the basic exercises come the unarmed combat techniques, as well as those using weapons. A round lasts for only 40 seconds, but must be repeated for anything up to four hours. 
This ensures that every attack technique becomes second nature and instinctive, perfectly sharp and perfectly delivered with maximum strength every time. By the time they are finished, the students should be able to deliver each technique blindfolded. The kitchen of Shaolin Temple prepares vegetarian food for over a hundred people every day. Dishes like bean sprouts, steamed buns and rice. Despite their intensive exercise program, Shaolin martial monks are vegetarians. The simplicity of their food reflecting the simplicity of their lifestyle. Secular disciples, like martial monks, are also required to be vegetarian. The extent of their exercise regime means that these children often eat much more than their adult counterparts. At present, Shaolin Kung Fu is taught mainly by two great masters. One is Master Shi Hen Jun, the head of the Secular Disciples Training School. And the other is Master Shi De Yang, the coach of the Martial Monks Reserve Team. Each new disciple is carefully screened to see whether they have the requisite talent and ability. Hands can smash bricks. And break sticks. Feet can splinter rocks. And a staff. Even the most delicate parts of the body can become immune to scimitar or spear attack. The stomach can resist a trident stab. Or can break sticks. The throat can resist attack by spear. Tamitos 